folks. Good afternoon and welcome to the African Allure Outdoors. It is now almost 5 p.m. and uh, we're at the bush pig feeding site and I wanted to go with just a little bit of site selection with you guys that you have a better idea of what I look for when I'm selecting a site. So I'm going to move around this way and um, if you have a look up here behind me um, you'll see that there is a nice there is a nice uh, steep slope behind me here. So this is quite key for me. There's a nice area here for me to build a blind, a natural blind. It's up high out of the way. This is on the southwestern side of my feeding site. And this is good because the wind normally blows from the northwest that way. Um, we are, we've got a few challenges here in this particular area in the sense that it is very mountainous. I'm sure if I move just this way a little bit, you'll probably see the mountain up here behind me. So what happens at night is we get these catabatic winds and a catabatic wind moves from up top down to the bottom and it moves all the way down at night and then during the day it turns around and it blows the other way. Now my bush pig feeding site is just here below me on the ground over here they've been hitting the the bait quite hard they've i think i started feeding the site on tuesday they hit it um thursday and friday night it doesn't look like they've been here uh, last night but just looking at the evidence here i'm sure we're going to check the trail camera the trail camera if you look carefully you will see it on the tree over here and that i'm sure is going to reveal that there was probably a brown hyena here last night so a good reason for the pigs not to come in. Maybe the other reason is, is that uh, we were here very late, like I am today again. But what I'm doing is I'm trying to condition these pigs that they get into coming into the feed early in the evenings. And uh, through that, they've got to get used to my scent. So I've got, I'm feeding late in the evenings now. This is also just to try and avoid the baboon problem. And... Uh, We'll try and mitigate that. So now you've seen the site where I want to place my um, hide, my blind, and we'll do that in a separate video. But I just want to show you the site that I'm feeding at the moment is here on the ground. So what I'm using is the old uh, leaf stomach from a, a, a uh, some wildebeest that we harvested last week. And I'm just putting the maize and that nice smelly stuff under there. And the reason I'm doing that is just purely to keep the baboons away the baboons were through here today just walking down this riverbed to get here this evening the tracks are just all over the place so if you have a look on this side uh, behind me here we've got a rather large tree what i'm going to do is uh, i've subsequently found that this particular site is full of rocks and <laughs> it's going to be almost impossible to plant a pole here so my plan is is to actually just use the tree as a stand and what i've done is i've taken one of my old feeders and i've modified it and i'm going to put a big strap around it and i'm going to strap it to that tree and every night that will throw feed at six o'clock seven o'clock and eight o'clock and the reason i put it onto those times is i want the baboons to get habituated to the sound and then it becomes a, like a dinner gong for them the other thing that I did with this site selection here is I've selected it very close to a road so that there's always traffic here. Um, this is a public road. Obviously with the lockdown at the moment, the traffic is not uh, so intense. Um, not that it is a very busy road anyway. The other thing is as well is just on the other side of the road here is a little human settlement. There's basically a house and some staff quarters. So there's always a racket here of humans and human smells. And this is something that is quite critical when it comes to bush pig. You know, we'd like to hunt them in as natural environments as possible. And that is what we are doing here. But because we are unable to control things like the wind, um, smell, sounds, that sort of thing. If you can have pigs that are really sort of semi used to the smell of people and they're used to the sounds of people, it just helps you when you're in a stand here. The other benefit of using these mechanical feeders is that when they do go off, you're able to do things like draw your bow and get yourself ready. Obviously that there are a few angles involved in, in this here. Um, we're hoping that they're gonna lift this severe lockdown in South Africa fairly shortly, and then we will be able to hunt with people again. 
and uh, I think probably this bush pig I'm going to hunt with the landowner here he's a very good friend of mine uh, Rob and uh, he farms here on top of the, the mountain he has a beautiful lodge up here as well incredibly beautiful um, we can maybe show you that in another video but for now this is my site selection I choose riverbeds because they're natural walkways for animals to move up and down and uh, I've chosen this particular point because as I said there's a human settlement just across the road there's a nice place for me to hang a feeder and there's an awesome place for me to build a blind the other thing is I'm going to move slow enough hopefully this camera can track me and uh, I'm gonna move up a little bit here I uh, hope you should be able to see behind me here but there's some pretty big trees up there and what I'm hoping is is that if the wind is proving to be a problem here with these pigs that uh, I will be able to put a big tree stand up in those trees and then hopefully the wind that is coming down off the mountains will blow our wind over the top of the ridge here rather than push it down here because at the moment it looks like the pigs have been coming from downriver um, I'm not sure let's just have a look Let's see if the camera will track me all the way around here. So now you guys are looking almost down river. I'm just going to move this thing a little bit that you can see. But just around the corner here, there's a small watering hole. And it's quite an important place for the pigs to come and sort of drink and a lot of other species. But it does bring those unwarranted or unwanted species as well. So what I'm going to do is the light is quite nice now is I'm going to try and take a 3D photograph and thanks for watching folks until the next one. The next one we're going to be talking about camouflage and all the different things about camouflage not just clothing we're we talking about scent camouflage, light camouflage, night camouflage, the whole treaty and this is all related to these bush pig escapades here of ours. So stick with us please hit the like and subscribe down below and also, uh, if you hit this little red button here, if you're on a PC, it should show you a subscribe. Subscribe to the channel and follow us. We love bringing you this content. Thank you. Goodbye.